Welcome back to Her Rules Radio. I'm Alexandra Jamison. So excited. Welcome to the year 2020. We are so thrilled to have you listening in to our little podcast, which is five years old. That kind of makes us a senior citizen in podcast land. Um, I am a coach, consultant. I've been a food, health, success, and business and creative leadership coach for almost 20 years. I think this is going to be my 20th anniversary. Holy smokes. And in the last few years, I have been seriously focusing on creative leadership for women entrepreneurs. You driven type A creative types who really have this deep pull, this calling to create something in the world, whether it's artwork or a book or a business. It is this deep voice in you that will not be quiet, that will not shut up. I know because I'm the same way. Um, I am going to be offering today some really fabulous tips and tricks and tools, my perspective on creative leadership. And this is for you. I mean, this is for everyone, but especially I work with women and people who identify as women to help bring out their unique creative strengths so that you can be fully realized to be totally integrated in who you are, what you're here to do and grow your impact and your success in the world. And I thank you for being here. I feel truly grateful that I get to share this work with you all. Thank you for your time and your attention. I know that those are two of the most valuable commodities that we have in this life. I see your commitment. I see you all showing up in the world. Those of you who are in my Facebook group, those of you who follow me on Instagram, at Delicious Alex, um, I see your commitment to your work and your creative expression, your health, your relationships, putting in the time and resource to be fully expressed in this short time that we have here in this life. Your work matters. Your work is important. I believe that so deeply. I think we need more and more creative women who are fully in their bodies, who feel healthy and aligned and proud and brave, who are willing to speak up about what answers and solutions they see, who are rallying forces of people and resources of money to put towards the the vision the goals, the answers that we need. So let's talk about my perspective on all this. Creative leadership and the creatrix. I talk about the creatrix energy that's in each of us, especially the the driven entrepreneurial women that I love working with. So creatrix is this old word that means she who creates, authoress, feminine founder, and that is, you know, it's kind of like this avatar, this mythological energy. Creatrix, you could think of it as the muses speaking through us. And it relates to the very modern idea of creative leadership, which is, from my perspective, it means leading in a way that embraces lifelong learning. The creative leader is someone who handles change with creative thinking skills and uh, an attitude of, we can figure this out. This leader is as committed to her own autonomy, freedom from past limiting beliefs, as well as committing to connecting with others. Two sides of the same coin, autonomy and connection. This leader commits to bringing her unique voice and vision to the world in service of their own abundance, right? I want you to be prosperous. I want you to be successful personally, because it means that you are healing something deep inside you. And at the same time, using your work to serve and uplift others. Now, At the end of this show, I'm going to be sending you to a link for a special free training that I'm offering this week 
all about Creatrix leadership, I really hope you'll join us. Actually, I'm just going to give you that link right now too. Why not? You can go to bit.ly forward slash Creatrix Leader 2020. That's C-R-E-A-T-R-I-X Leader 2020. And that's a bit.ly at the beginning of it. And you can go to my Instagram at Delicious Alex. I've got links up there. You can just click it, join the training. I'll see you on Wednesday. But today I'm going to talk about some of the stuff we'll be going over in that training. We're going to talk about what creatrix leadership is, why it's so important in this fast changing economy, uncertain times, and how you can really grow this confidence and clarity inside yourself for success and healing in 2020. We're going to talk about imposter syndrome, the remedies for it, how being seen is a a kind of a double-edged sword for some of us. We'll talk about overwhelm, confusion, and fear of judgment. And really, it's all about shame. And I'm going to share some seriously personal stuff in a moment about that. Then we'll talk about connecting with your inner authority for self-trust, growing your productivity with aligned action, And I want to help you get clear on your goals and your next steps so that you can really bring your work into the world this year. Um, And hey, it doesn't matter what year it is. If you're listening to this in 2024, still applies. These rules still apply. All right, so let's talk about this whole creatrix leadership thing on a deeper level. Now, in the last few years, I have been transitioning from being a health and food and body image coach, which I did for over 15 years. Um, And it really started to shift with my last book, Women, Food and Desire, which was all about really embracing your cravings, reclaiming your body as your ally and your friend, and learning how to savor life while helping your body feel as good as she wants to feel. So that was kind of the culmination of the first 15 years of my work from being a health coach to being more of an embodiment coach and empowerment coach. And in the last five years, a lot of things shifted for me. And it really kicked off with right around the time Women, Food and Desire launched, my mom died. And I... Mom, I love you. I'm sending a kiss up to heaven for you, baby. Um, What an incredible woman she was. And like all humans, she had some deep tragedies and healing to, to do in her own life. And some of that, most of that revolved around that part of the family, my family's history with addiction and mental illness, many suicides, many attempted suicides, and also the combination of all of that with an incredible brilliance. The people in my family are so freaking smart. I am for sure in awe of their brilliance. I mean, these people, when I go to va- on vacation, when I go home and see my family, they've read everything. <laughs> they have read every book out there. I mean, I read a lot, but they read a lot, a lot. They're brilliant and they're super creative and they're all just doing amazing things in the world. And there's this huge conflict between those things that I'm really starting to understand. I am getting some profound messages from the universe, from source, about these complications that so many of us feel, that I see in so many of my clients, which is a deep shame implanted in us from our family of origin, really through no fault of their own. I have so much compassion and understanding. People are just people trying to get through their life, no matter how successful on the outside they seem to be. And that shame, which really links into imposter syndrome um, or creative blocks, that shame is one of the most profound things that we can heal to help us grow our 
positive impact in the world. I've seen for myself that my own personal work in releasing the shame of coming from a family, my beloved family of so much addiction and mental illness, like seeing how that early childhood shame really impacted my ability to be creative and feel confident in the world. And it's not to blame anyone. It's just to see, oh, that's the story that my very young child mind made up that I was to be ashamed of myself because I was of this family, even though they also gave me all of my strengths and have been nothing but supportive. Well, maybe not 100% supportive. (laughs) I'll be honest, when there are people in your life who have their own deep and monstrous creative blocks that they either are not working to untangle or haven't seen or won't admit that they have or just don't even realize they're there yet. If they have their own creative blocks and they see you striving to be seen and and step in the spotlight, they might be feeling uh, in competition with you and they might act out in that way to dampen your light. But here's the thing. It is absolutely possible. This is not about self-victimization. This is about seeing, oh, I've been dimming my own light. I've been hiding so that I don't outshine the other people from my life. Ooh, that's some deep stuff. And I see those exact same old messages of shame and family and culture and society. It might be from the religion that you were brought up in. It might be from your family like mine, or it might be from just the culture at large that we live in that tells us we're supposed to be or look a certain way. So the work of the creative leader is to really get clear on all this deep personal work so that we can have professional success and be seen, so that we can feel safe to be seen. And a creative leader combines their strengths and love of learning is a strength. Love of beauty is a strength. Um, Justice is a strength. Leadership itself is, is considered a strength. There's lots of different strengths that you can choose from that. That's actually some of the work that I do with my clients early on. We always go through a strengths kind of quiz to see what your strengths are. And we combine those strengths with your values. What are the things you put the highest value on? Um, And that's a whole other intake process. And then you get clear on what your vision is, what you're here to do, what you see is possible. What am I offering to the world? Whether it's my book or my program or my podcast or my art or my paintings or my words. And then it's communicating all of those things. And the way we communicate is by speaking or writing or painting. It's doing the work. So creative leadership or creatrix leadership, I should say, is a combination of strengths, values, personal integration, vision, and communication. So why is all this so important? Why am I making this the flagship of my entire work these days? Listen, when we creative types, and by the way, asterisk, I truly believe every single person is creative. I mean, you right now, your body is creating cells and dividing. Your body builds blood and new neural pathways up until the day you die. That in itself is pretty freaking miraculous. So we creative types heal our self-imposed limits from those early unconscious limiting beliefs and grow our unique world, our work in the world. When we actually put our work out there and continue doing it as we continue making it and getting clear about it and changing it and growing it. When we do that, we offer great healing and inspiration to others. And by the way, I want you to make money. I do. I think if you're here listening to this show, if you're a creative 
entrepreneur like I am, or if you're like many of the women I've worked with in the last few years, your health coaches, your doctors, your, your PhDs, your MDs, you are writers, your podcasters, you care. You do good things with money. Yes, it's true. Even if that is investing in yourself first for a while, which I highly recommend, we need to heal ourselves so that we can offer our best to others. So that's why it's so important because your ideas are good. I see you. I see your ideas and the work you want to put out there. I truly, truly, truly believe in it. And here's the other thing. And this is, this is part of my own personal story with this work. Growing up in a family with the addiction and the mental illness, I saw these beautiful, brilliant people get stuck and not be able to fully realize their work in the world. And it was heartbreaking. It was truly heartbreaking, painful to them and to the people seeing it. And I want you to feel the value of your worth. I want you to feel how worthy your ideas are because your ideas are not necessarily just your ideas. My ideas are not necessarily my ideas. They are, I really believe we are all connected to source. We are all manifestations of this same universal energy and goop, right? We all come from the same goop and we all go back to the same goop. And we're all inspired, literally given life to, we are breathed into by nature, the universe, source, God, what have you. So my ideas come from source. Your ideas come from source or God or the universe. And when we shut that down, we're not living our full potential. And we feel regret and I think regret and what if ing and I should have ing. Personally, it's one of the most painful feelings. I would rather try and fail than not try at all. And I always learn something through the trying. It's never fatal. So what do you get out of owning your own creatrix leadership, becoming a creative leader, right? This person who is always learning, using their strengths, using their values for a vision and personally healing and communicating their work. What do you get out of all this? Well, this is your greatest opportunity to create value for others and contribute to something bigger than yourself. And that is one of those primary human drives. And when we use that in the right way, your strengths are a huge competitive advantage when we use our creative strengths. They truly are a way to differentiate ourselves. They're a way to really like stand out. And again, we have to get comfortable with standing out. We have to get comfortable with being seen. It also helps us become really magnetic to the right people, right? The people that we want to serve and work with and attracting the right partners and opportunities. This all helps you stand out and attract your ideal audience and customers. And one of the biggest limiting beliefs in becoming a creatrix leader, really becoming the creatrix leader that you are, right? If you're listening to this, if you got this far in this podcast and you're listening, it's in you. It is ready to be developed and grown and step out and say, hey, here I am. This is what I got. One of the biggest limiting beliefs is imposter syndrome. And hey, it's BS, but it's also known as shame. We fear that we will be discovered as a fraud, or we tell ourselves that we aren't ready. Or if you're like me, you have this, you know, deeply old origin story of 
brokenness or, you know, confusion around being strong, being worthy, being healthy. You know, we secretly doubt our ability to do the work we want to do. And yet we feel driven for external validation. And because of that, we stay small and hide. And we don't have the impact or attract the clients or the partners or the buyers for our books or whatever it is that we want. Now, I want to share something with you that's so super important. I've talked about it on the show before, but it's one of the only proven methods for dealing with and managing imposter syndrome, managing this shame that we all inherently feel deep, deep, deep down. And that is this incredible study by two women, Pauline Rose Clance and Suzanne Imus. It's called the imposter phenomenon in high achieving women. So they studied all these women who were demonstrably outstanding in their academic and professional fields. These women who experience imposter phenomenon, AKA imposter syndrome or fraud police, women who experience it, believing that they're not really bright, that it was all due to luck or they've fooled everyone or they're getting away with something and they're going to be discovered any minute now. And I see this again in my most accomplished, most educated clients, my PhDs, my MDs, the CEOs, the founders, they have this same imposter syndrome. And the study covers several ways to dissolve and manage it, but I'm going to highlight one that has been foundational to my own growth and ability to thrive as a professional creative and that is consciously joining a group of driven, creative women. So it's like going to AA or Al-Anon, but even more specific. It's kind of group coaching. It's an interactional group in which there are other high achieving women experiencing imposter syndrome because as we start to share our secrets, Others are able to share theirs. And we're so relieved to discover, oh, I'm not the only one who feels this way. And in my experience, as we get to know other incredible, creative, driven women who have these same imposter thoughts that mirror our own, it's so easy to see, oh my gosh, you're totally amazing. You have imposter syndrome too? Like, I can't even believe you have imposter syndrome because I see how incredible you are. And then you hear yourself think that or say that out loud and you realize, oh my gosh, that's me too. Like, I can't imagine she has this because she's so cool. But wait, they all think I'm really cool too. So, ah, maybe my imposter syndrome is also BS. (laughs) And most of us have this deep subconscious belief that we aren't worthy, we aren't good enough. And we might have this question come up, who am I to ask for more? Who do I think I am that I could be a leader or a successful entrepreneur or an artist who makes a great living selling their art? That's another huge story. The starving artist from my family. Ooh, still working on that one. The answer is you are like all of us, like Oprah, like Einstein. You are pure expressions of source or universal energy. We are all created from and connected to the same source. You are a manifestation of the universe. So who are you not to encompass all things? So that's the foundational stuff. The next step on the creatrix leadership journey is to really be in all that and then start growing your own inner authority. This is intuition, quieting, perceived judgments, a little shout out to intuition here. CEOs use intuition and we should too. Intuition is not just about waiting for, you know, a bolt of lightning idea to come out of the clouds. 
Intuition is acknowledging all of your resources, being in touch with your physical body. So it definitely ties into your health and your body image and your practices around physicality. Intuition is learning to listen to your inner voice. It may show up as physical sensations. It may show up as emotions. But you ever know, ever had that experience of you just know something to be true? You ever get that feeling in your body? Or have you ever had an experience where you're like, oh, this is dangerous. I'm not going down there. And then you find out later that you were so accurate in avoiding something. Inner authority or intuition, it's how we make decisions. It's how CEOs, and there are some really interesting books and studies about how CEOs use their gut. They make a lot of gut decisions. So we are not unlike those folks. It's weaving together body, mind, and spirit, information, emotions, and this energetic unspoken truth of reality in the universe. And feeling into what other people are bringing to the table. And one of the best strategies for getting in touch with your inner authority is just that, to start to get into alignment with it by intentionally listening to it every day, building that muscle. So to do that, we have to start syncing up with our body, mind, spirit. Meditation, great way to do that kind of organic dance movement, putting on a favorite song, moving around the house, letting the music move you. Asking your body a question about what you should do next. Should I take a left? Should I take a right? Just listening to the information and following it and see what happens. Asking your body, should I have a salad and soup today? Or should I have pasta? What does my body say? And then notice how you feel after. Like what was the information you got? And how did you feel afterwards? Right? So that's where all of this 15 plus years of health coaching and body empowerment work come into play. Your body is an integral part of your intuition process. Your inner authority resides in your body. It also has to do with your nervous system, learning how to manage and honor your emotions. Because when we block or resist fear or sadness or grief or anger or other emotions that we define as quote unquote bad, we're turning away important information and we're squashing part of ourselves that needs to be moved through. So either something old, like an earlier trauma is being triggered and therefore pointing to something that needs attention and healing, or perhaps your boundaries are being crossed or you're seeing something valuable. Your body, mind, spirit is saying, Hey, this is important. Pay attention. So we must clear out blocks that have been put into place over years, walls between us and our body, walls between us and emotions, which is cutting us off from our full full power, energy, abilities, and wisdom. I have so many exercises and practices that I use with my Creatrix clients. And I'm going to be talking about the Creatrix 2020 mentorship in a little bit. And that's, this is why it's so important. When you feel and acknowledge your emotions, which are super tied to your body and your intuition, you can use it as energy. You can actually like give it a job to get productive and you can move through it in a healthy way, which gives you more vitality, helps you see clearer, helps you make decisions quicker. So we need to ask our emotions, what are you here for? What caused this? What does this feel like? What does this remind me of? And what does this emotion want me to do? If you sit with those questions, it's an incredibly powerful way to move through and move through any blocks and really honor emotions and start integrating your full self 
and build your inner authority and intuition muscles. So I want to talk about a a client of mine. This is Lisa's story. 40 year old mom owns two businesses with her husband. She went to a conference recently all about the businesses that they own. And she was one of the only, she was one of a handful of women. She went to this conference and it was like all old white dudes. They were all super serious. They were all super boring. And all they wanted to talk about was strategy. And Lisa has opened two successive businesses in record time. And she realized I do business so differently. They were not open to talking about the, the quote unquote softer topics, talking about intuition, talking about experiences. There was no opening to talk about what she felt were her strengths in running these businesses. And these are kind of women's health centers. Now she has three classes from having her masters in exercise and nutrition, but she worried. She started to worry when she was at this conference, she was worrying that she was being judged by these men because they do things so differently than her and she couldn't quite relate to them. She also was worrying because she's like, well, you know, I have 10 to 15 pounds to lose and I want to start teaching exercise classes at my centers, but who am I to do this? You know, I'm young, I'm a woman, I need to lose weight. And I said, hold on, Lisa, hold on. (laughs) Does thin equal healthy? She said, no. She's like, look, I'm getting my master's in exercise and nutrition. Thin does not equal healthy. I've worked with plenty of thin people who are so unhealthy. And I've worked with plenty of people who were like 10 to 15 pounds over their target. And they were in great physical shape. I said, okay, so that idea is demonstrably false. But here's the other thing. You and I, we're a little weird. (laughs) We're outside the norm, right? We think, what's wrong with me? People seem to like me and respond to me, but I don't feel like... We're on the same page. Like they're so different from me. Lisa was saying, I I don't feel like I'm an adult. I'm joyful and bouncy. I laugh a lot. Other moms at my son's school are serious and they never laugh or smile. I said, so does being serious and joyless equal being an adult? She said, oh, no, not at all. I said, okay. So we have these preconceptions and we define ourselves by these preconceptions. But if we take a moment to question them, we can see, ah, I am weird. And what I mean by that is we do things differently and people are super attracted to that, right? She's like this magnetic personality and yet they're confused by it. (laughs) Story of my life. People are like attracted to me. They're curious about like, what is she doing? She does things so differently. And yet you're so confused. Like what, who are you? It's like, I'm an alien. So she wants to be herself. And yet she feels judged by people in her professional sphere and by the the other parents at her son's school. Well, that's the truth. We're the outliers. We're the boundary pushers. We're the risk takers. We're the change makers. We see a different way of doing it. We offer new ideas to the world and people are excited by and attracted to that. And they're confused by us. We're usually the first ones in our families to be entrepreneurs or artists or professional creatives. And usually We have very little community around us, people who understand us, what we're trying to do, people who admire us and cheer us on, understand our drive. Mostly, if you're like Lisa and me, you get, I just don't know how how you do it. That would scare me. Aren't you worried? Or what if something, you know, do you have something to fall back on? This is sometimes described as tall poppy syndrome. And this is when people who stand out Um, are resented, attacked, cut down, or criticized 
because they are reaching higher or reaching for something different because they stand out. So this leads us to squash our unique creative voice, our vision, our ideas because of the fear of being judged, either perceived or real judgment. We try to fit in because we're human. We squash our ideas because we want to be accepted and our ideas are outside the norm. We see a different way to create things. We feel unsatisfied because we're hiding our truth or squashing our innate energies. We turn against ourselves rather than fight the system or create stronger boundaries with people around us, which causes a war within us, which drains our energy, makes us feel frustrated, or causes like this foggy lack of clarity. And then we stop taking action towards creating and profiting from our own dreams and contributing to the world and people around us, which is truly at the heart of everything we're trying to do. So connecting with your inner authority for self-trust and growing your productivity and not to be busy, but growing your productive work, like doing the work, doing your writing, showing up to record your podcasts, building your business and making offers. That's, that's the aligned action that I talk about. It's not about working from dawn to dusk just to be busy, just to seem like you're productive. It was actually like doing the, the creative work that fuels your growth and your vision. There's a lot of centering exercises. I'm actually going to take people through a great centering exercise to connect with your inner authority and quiet those perceived judgments in that training. And again, I'm just going to throw this out there again. So you can sign up for the training, which is this week on Wednesday, January 8th, 2020. Go to bit.ly forward slash creatrix leader 2020. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm also going to be interviewing one of my amazing clients, Alyssa. She'll be joining us to talk about her experience in this coaching with me over the last year. And I'll be talking about the Creatrix 2020 Mentorship, which begins January 24th. Applications are open now. So I would love for you to check it out if all of this feels like yes, I want to grow my creative biz this year. And that may be professionalizing your creative work. It may be committing to growing your business, your entrepreneurial venture. Or perhaps you already have a business that's had some success, but you know you want it to be different. You want to create something new, but you're not quite sure how to do that or what shape it's forming. And you want a coach. You want outside eyes and support to take the creative risks that you're starting to suspect are necessary to really succinctly communicate what this vision is that you have. So the Creatrix 2020 mentorship is going to be up to 10 women. It's a small group coaching program that will go over the course of this year, 2020. So it's twice monthly group coaching meetings where we all will meet on a video conference call. I will do group coaching. So we'll all be checking in about what we're working on, what our challenges are, and I'll help all of us get unblocked and clear about what our next steps are. And you get your own private coaching sessions with me throughout the year too. We'll dive into these things like imposter syndrome, our upper limit issues, our capacity issues, And we have a fabulous two-day retreat in New York City, March 19th and 20th. And these retreats are unbelievable. I've been running them for, what, over a decade. They are creatively expanding. They are super clarifying. We get so much more work done in a couple of days than you could ever do working from home or working from your co-working space. Some comments from the most recent group I just have to share with you. Here's one quote. I really appreciate the women in this group. It makes me feel not so alone in this thing I'm trying to build. They're all such brave people and it helps me be brave too. 
Another quote was, it's crazy how connected I feel to these women all over the country. I feel so safe here. I feel safe to be seen. And the retreat was so helpful in me being able to step out of my old box. And finally, the retreat with the other women opened my eyes, heart, and vision. They're going to be on my support team for years to come. Yes. So, Creatrix 2020 Mentorship. Yeah, it actually begins January 24th, but the applications and uh, it, so what you do is you apply and you have a conversation with me and we decide if we're a good fit for each other. But I want you to come to the training. So go sign up for the training on Wednesday, January 8th, 2020. Go to bit.ly forward slash Creatrix Leader 2020. And thank you so much for being here. I truly feel thankful that I get to share this work with you all. Thank you for your time and your attention. I see and feel your commitment to your work and your creative expression, your health, your relationships, and putting in the time and resources to be fully expressed in this short time we have in this life. Your work matters. Your work is important. I believe that. Thanks for being here and I'll see you back here next week. Mwah.